On this episode, we're going to do a do-it-yourself project concerning the sights on your firearm. Now, there's nothing like a great set of sights on a firearm. However, it may not be in your budget to replace them, or perhaps the firearm is set up so the sights aren't replaceable. It's also very possible that you may not be able to see the colors properly of the sights offered for your firearm. So if you've checked off any of those boxes, you're going to want to check out this episode. It's definitely going to make your firearm sight a lot more user friendly and take them to the next level. As shooting enthusiasts, we should understand and recognize the importance of a good sight picture and particularly the focus on the front blade of the sighting system, whether it's a pistol, rifle, or shotgun, whether it's slow or rapid fire. As experienced shooters may notice, as you start to age, your eyesight isn't what it used to be and perhaps your focus isn't as sharp as it once was. These are just a few of the factors that may sway a shooter to want to do something different with their sighting systems. Types of sights vary as much as the shooters that use them. Depending what the firearm is being used for will usually dictate the type of sights to use for its specific purpose. For bullseye shooting, a thin blade with a small dot or no dot at all may be desired. For a firearm used for self-defense or rapid fire during competition, a thicker blade with a large brightly colored dot for quicker target acquisition in varying light conditions may be preferred. Gaining popularity with many shooters are small electronic sights that project a red dot or other illuminated reticle for use on their firearms. Now it should go without saying, however, you always want to make sure that your firearm is clear of all ammunition and made safe, remembering to keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction at all times. Most of my firearms have already had the sights replaced, upgraded, or the sight treatment that you're about to see performed on them. This is a new pistol to my inventory and makes a perfect candidate from start to finish on the do-it-yourself project you're about to see. The sights that came on the pistol weren't all that bad, being a three-dot configuration and very usable. However, the front dot is the same size as the rear dots, and when viewed from the rear, the front dot appears much smaller, drawing my focus rearward. During slow or rapid fire, I found it a little distracting when forming a sight picture on a target, along with following up with subsequent shots. This example shows drawing on a target with the original size dot on the front sight. After enlarging the dot, you can see how much quicker it is acquiring the target, forming a sight picture, and getting back on target after recoil recovery. The eye is much more prone to focusing on that front sight and getting back on target, along with being much more visible in lower lighting conditions. Some front sights, like this PPK style pistol, are milled as part of the slide and are not replaceable. This is where our do-it-yourself sight treatment becomes much more practical. Before starting, you may want to prep by gathering items such as a base to hold the firearm, such as a shooting bag, to clean off debris, a toothbrush, and cotton swabs work well a few toothpicks to apply paint, and a brace of pad, several small sized drill bits to form the larger dot, and if metal sights, some sort of rotary tool. Of course, flat white paint and a colored paint of your liking. You'll want to have tape on hand to cover and protect the slide's finish, especially if working with a rotary tool on metal sights, or when using an abrasive pad to remove burrs and rough spots.
You'll also have to decide if you want to stay with a dot or change that to a vertical line or perhaps a square. For this project, we are going to stay with a dot configuration. Another consideration is the size of the dot itself. It may take a few times to get the size just right for your liking. One way to cut down on the guesswork is to take the small drill bits and support them up on end. Paint the back side of the drill bits. Place or tape them to the side of your front sight, then aim at a target. Pick the size that you feel the most comfortable with. When picking drill bit sizes for your dot, you can compare the width of the bit to the width of the blade, which will give you the range of what is too small or too big. You may find that if you prefer a very large dot, that it just may not fit on the sight blade. Also, if you prefer to leave the dot recessed, you want to leave some room there for chamfering. So pick a dot size that will not only fit on your front blade, but will allow enough room for chamfering or beveling of the edges if you choose to recess the dot. It's also very important to leave enough space between the edges of the dot and either edges and top of the blade so as to properly center the front sight with the rear sight. Whether your sight is polymer or metal, if it's completely flat with no indentation on it, start with the smallest drill bit you can find. You're going to have to center it and make a small indentation with it as your starting point. If spinning by hand or in a rotary tool and starting with the smallest bit, just touch lightly the previous indentation you made. Touch lightly with the spinning bit, checking numerous times that you are forming the dimple or cup where you intended to. Once satisfied that you are centered, move to the next larger sized bit. Again, touch the spinning bit with just enough pressure to begin removing material and checking numerous times that you are creating a centered and even dimple. The largest of the bits you've chosen will be to add a chamfered or beveled edge around the dimple that you made, or you can go deeper with it to create a recessed dot. Again, start off lightly until you have a centered, even dot. Working with the polymer sights, I'm just going to spin the bit by hand, and I recommend doing it this way, especially if doing it for the first time. Steady your firearm on something stable. For pistols, a small shooting bag works well. You can remove the slide if you wish, but I like getting a grip on the pistol's handle and locking it into the bag. From a good squared angle to the face of the blade, and again, starting with the smallest bit, apply enough pressure while spinning the bit to start removing material, checking numerous times to ensure the dot is centered. When satisfied, I move to the next larger bit. For the larger size of the dot that I want, I go to a larger bit. This is a great time to take a closer look of what you've accomplished so far. If you want even a larger dot, make sure you have enough room on your blade. Make sure that the dot is round and that you've been forming the dot from a good angle and not creating an oval. Now I can make my dot a little larger while adding a chamfered or beveled edge around it. This will aid with allowing light to more or less be funneled in and reduce any shadowing over the recessed area. Being about as large as the dot can go and having a nice bevel, it's time to clean up all those burrs and shavings. Using the rounded end of a small paintbrush and a small piece of abrasive pad works well to clean the dot up and doesn't deform the shape of the dot. Just place a small piece of the abrasive pad on the tip of the brush and start spinning. It can be a little bit tricky at first. So if you choose, you could take the larger pad, put it on the end of the brush, Then put on your sight and start spinning. Sometimes those little burrs and shavings get in there pretty tight. You can always use a little toothpick with a abrasive pad on the tip of it and move around to remove the burrs. Once satisfied that your soon to be dot has all the burrs removed and you've brushed off any other debris with the toothbrush, we can start prepping it to be painted. I like to use a quality flat white paint for my dot. Shake the can vigorously and in a well ventilated area, I can spray some paint into the cap and dip a toothpick into it. 
I'll prepare several toothpicks and place them off to the side, allowing enough time for the paint to seep into the wood of the toothpick. To prep the site surface for paint, I'll dip a cotton swab into alcohol, then spin it on the site surface. I'll then turn it around and use the clean dry side to ensure a film-free surface. I'll then vigorously shake our spray paint can again, making sure the paint is well mixed and spray some into the cap. I'll dip the toothpick in it, then apply to the site. I'll start at the outer edges and work my way inward using the beveled edge to create a line around the dot. Seemingly no matter how careful you are, some paint will get on the outside of your edge. We will clean that up later. Once finished painting, Prop up your firearm vertically so the paint spreads evenly and doesn't sag to one side of the dot. Allow the paint to dry completely. Once dry, you'll notice that you may have had some paint go out of the lines. That's not a problem. Making sure that the paint is completely dry, take a pocket or utility knife and gently scrape away the paint starting from the outside to the edge of the bevel. The blade will remove any excess paint leaving a crisp line around the outer edge of the dot to produce a nice, round, sharp image. You can see here that our dot, after cleaning up the edges, is really starting to come together. Taking a closer look at my dot, I'm very satisfied with the results so far. As you can see here in our site picture, our front dot is sharp, clear, and much larger than the original. The question now is, do we want to leave it white or add some color to it? Using several toothpicks that we covered in our flat white base paint, we can actually apply the colors to them and use them as swatches. Hold them out at arm's length to see what color you prefer. As a flat, clear protective finish is going to be applied at the end of the project, the use of a brightly colored marker or highlighter isn't out of the question. Also recognize the difference between a luminescent and a phosphorine type of paint. A luminescent type of paint is brightly colored during regular and low lighting conditions. A phosphorine type of paint is the type of paint that glows in the dark. Depending on the quality of the paint and the color of the paint, can stay charged anywhere between 2 to 12 hours depending on how much exposed to a light source. There is no shortage of gun sight paints available on the market. Some come as individual bottles, pens, or as a kit. Some come as a luminescent or a phosphorescent type of paint, or both. I've also had success using marking paint commonly used for marking trees for cutting and for marking survey stakes. Another type of paint that is durable, brightly colored, and somewhat inexpensive are vinyl fishing lure or jig paints. Now on a self-defensive firearm, I definitely would not want anything less than tritium night sights on it. However, again, depending on the firearm available, that may not be possible. My preference is a vinyl fishing jig paint as it dries translucent and shows up brightly over a flat white base. Another option is to add a gray center to your dot so as to mimic traditional night sights. The tritium vial appears gray in regular light and surrounded by a white ring. Standing a few feet away from this pistol, you would swear there are night sights on it. This really helps with obtaining the same familiar sight picture if using, for example, an economical 22 lr or CO2 operated pistol as a training platform for a centerfire pistol with traditional night sights. More modern night sights have a colored ring around them, which also is not an issue to duplicate. Just apply a color that matches your primary firearm's colored ring. For the purposes of this pistol, I opted for a large, solid, brightly colored front dot using vinyl jig paint. I apply the colored paint the same way as the base flat white. The solid bright color offers a brilliant contrast to most background colors downrange and really stands out from the white dots on the rear sight. Remember to place the firearm vertically and allow the paint to completely cure. One reason I prefer the vinyl jig paint 
is that it dries translucent and starts to take on characteristics of a fiber optic, especially when the paint is layered or built up past the surface of the site. Just as with applying the flat white paint, the colored paint will escape out of the lines of the dot. Once the paint is fully cured, simply clean off the excess colored paint as we did with the flat white using a pocket or utility knife ensuring a sharp image of the dot. Remove any debris with a toothbrush. Take a close look at your dot. When satisfied that the size, shape, and color is what you wanted, wipe clean with alcohol and cotton swab as to prep the surface for a protective coat of flat clear paint. The flat clear seals your dot protecting it during use and cleaning and provides a non-glare feature to your sights. Shake the spray can vigorously to mix the paint and in a well ventilated area spray into the cap. Dip in your brush and apply a thin coat of flat clear. The original front sight dot was recessed and when shooting well lighting conditions were overhead, there was a shadow cast on the original dot basically causing it to disappear. With either a beveled chamfered edge or building up the dot past or even with the face of the blade, this is no longer an issue. Now without the zoom and the camera placed five feet away and on a very overcast foggy day, you can still see the front sight on our pistol. I'll pause here so as you can notice just how brilliantly the front sight appears. As I simulate drawing the firearm and gaining a sight picture against different colored backgrounds, I hope you can get a feel for just how much our sight painting treatment increases the ability to get on target quickly and aids with sight alignments. So we spent some time talking about how we can customize your front sight to meet your shooting needs. Now let's shift our focus to the rear sight. The factory fiber optic sights that came on this Smith & Wesson shield were fantastic. As a self-defensive pistol, I opted to replace them with night sights that featured a U-notch rear sight. I found the U-notch design less distracting and really helped me to acquire the front sight and target much quicker on the initial and subsequent shots at short range. Which is part of what a self-defensive pistol package should do, and being tritium night sights this is achieved in all lighting conditions. Whether in dim light, bright light, or no light at all. These sights also came with a brightly colored ring on the front blade. For me, the U-notch also allowed for good sight alignment at further distances during slow fire. I felt that for my application that this sighting system provided the complete package that I was looking for in a self-defensive pistol. And I also wanted to carry over this system to my other defensive pistols. My everyday carry pistol did come with a front night sight, but a smaller notched rear. Preferring the U-notch design for the intent of the pistol's use, I decided before replacing the rear sight to see if I can turn the square notch into a U. If you are performing this operation and after safety checking your pistol to ensure it's unloaded, make sure to protect your pistol's finish by applying several layers of tape as we are going to use a drill or other rotary tool to form the U-notch. Note the predominant color of the front sight. The front night sight had the traditional white ring and our previous sight painting technique was applied. You will need several small drill bits to achieve the proper width and shape of the U-notch. If metal sights, a bluing agent, or even flat paint will work to help finish off the metal and to help hold the pistol, a stable foundation to work off of. Start with the smallest bit in the rotary tool and work back and forth in the square notch. Notice the angle of which you're working the sight so as not to damage the slide's finish and also to ensure the U-channel that you are making is sloped forward. This will help to make sure that all you see is the sharp image of the U at the rear of the sight. Make sure not to go too deeply into the sight on your first pass as you'll probably need to go up at least one more bit size, leave enough material to form a perfect U and to make sure that the very bottom of your U-notch is centered. 
If satisfied with your progress, continue forming your U-notch with a larger size bit, minding your angle and depth, using the even vertical plane of the front and rear sight as a gauge. If preferring an even larger U-notch, move to a larger bit. Be careful not to go too low with the U-notch as going too deeply will affect your point of aim, point of impact. Once the U-notch is to your liking, take something round like the handle of a small paintbrush or the back of the drill bit and wrap a piece of mildly abrasive sandpaper around it. Work in the notch to clean up any burrs and to smooth out any marks. If metal sights, apply a bluing agent or apply flat black paint to protect the metal. At this point, you'll have a U-notch that appears to have been a part of the original sighting system. By turning the former square notch to a U-notch, I was able to copy the characteristics of the replacement sights on the other pistol. The same characteristics in varying light conditions were able to be transitioned over to all of my other defensive pistols in order to achieve the same sight picture over different firearms. It's understood being hesitant and doing something of this sort with your prized firearm. Initially doing the same treatments to a low cost CO2 pistol or replica firearm will build your confidence on doing it to the real thing. Plus you'll have the added benefit of having the same shape, feel and look of a CO2 practice pistol you may already be using for planking or drills to match your actual firearm. So we've covered on how to customize your front sight for the color and shape that you want. We also talked about reshaping your rear sight so as it has the same sight picture across different firearms. Or how you can customize the size, shape and color on different sights of different firearms depending on their specific purpose. In this next segment, we're gonna finish up the project by adding markings to the rear sight using the very same techniques we used on the front sight. Whether using single or multiple dots, lines, or other shapes to assist in lining your sights, you want to decide on what markings, if using any at all, that would best meet your goals. It's imperative that if customizing the rear sight markings, that you properly center where you want them. Using a pencil is generally a best practice for doing that. Before doing anything that is permanent, check the alignments of where you plan on placing your markings several times and adjust when necessary. Ensure that your rear markings will not only line up with your front sight, but also notice that the top of the sight plane is flat horizontally and that the gaps to either side of the front sight are even. As with our front sight, Make sure to protect the finish of the slide with several layers of tape. Whether making your marking on polymer sights by hand or the use of any rotary tool on metal ones, always start with the smallest drill bit. Inspect the mark you've just made to make sure that it's properly centered and move up to a larger bit if you decide to go with a larger marking. Carefully make an even dimple on the face of the rear sight. Once you've settled on the size of your rear marking, Ensure that it's even and cleaned up around the edges by applying light hand pressure to the bit. If a vertical line at the base of the notch or peep sight is a preference, come in from the top with the bit to create a groove. You may also consider a horizontal line to either side of the notch or peep sight that would frame the front dot. As before, wrap mildly abrasive sandpaper around the back end of the bit and use it on your line to clean off any burrs or to smoothen out any marks. As we did on our front sight, prep the surface by cleaning it with alcohol and cotton swab. Apply the flat white paint with a toothpick. Place the firearm vertically so the paint spreads evenly and allow to dry. Once dry, you can clean up or sharpen the image of the dot as we did on the front by using the tip of a pocket knife to remove any uneven paint. You can then decide to add a color or leave white, then cover the dot as we did on the front sight with a coat of clear flat paint. The very same should be done if using a line or any other marking that you choose. If preferred and all markings are blackened out with flat black paint, just remember to give it a protective coat of clear flat paint. So we've explored several options on how your firearm sighting system can be tailored to meet your specific needs and preferences. By applying these techniques, you can customize your front sight, rear sight, or both in order to make your sighting system much more user-friendly. 
Over the years, I've applied this technique not only to all of my firearms, but many fellow shooters. Whether it be a pistol, rifle, shotgun, I've done front posts on AR-15s, and across the board, it definitely decreases the amount of time of you getting on target and then lining up your sights. So whether you're applying this technique to your firearms factory sights or enhancing the replacement ones on your firearm, I hope that today's do-it-yourself project has shown you the processes and tools used to do a professional job in order to make your firearm sighting system much more user-friendly. And I really do hope that you found today's episode interesting and informative. If so, please subscribe, like, follow, and share our Top Predator Shooting channel, where I'm just a regular guy doing reviews and do-it-yourself projects from an unbiased perspective.